Hey friends, Ash here with GenSense. Hope you're doing really well. <laughs> Today we're gonna be talking about Dior Sauvage Eau de Parfum. Right on the cutting edge here. We're reviewing Dior Sauvage Eau de Parfum years after it first came out. Ugh. I was actually looking through my fragrances the other day and realized I just never reviewed it, never really talked about it. So I figured why not? So in this video, I'm gonna be giving you guys my breakdown on Dior Sauvage Eau de Parfum, let you know what I think about it, let you know how it stacks up, especially against Sauvage Eau de Toilette, and I'm gonna give you guys some alternatives to Sauvage Eau de Parfum as well. So let's jump into it. First off, let's go ahead and check out that presentation. On the front of the box, you get the name of the house, the name of the fragrance, the size, and the concentration. The concentration's right at the bottom. It's kind of hard to see, actually. At the top, there is nothing. On the sides, you just have some lines that actually wrap around the box. And on the back of the box, you just have a little information down at the bottom. Then on the bottom of the box, you have your ingredients, your badge code, and your barcode. My badge code for this bottle is 9G01. And here we have the bottle. Looks the exact same as the other Dior Sauvage bottles. Same style, same everything. You have the name of the house, name of the fragrance, and the concentration right there on the front. Then on the bottom of the bottle, you have a little information. You have the CD for Christian Dior, and you'll find your badge code etched into the glass on the bottom there. On the cap, you have the Christian Dior logo at the top, and it is a magnetic cap. And this should lift off if you just give it a little little twist, it should pop right up. If yours doesn't do that, you might have a fake. Actually, <laughs> you probably do. On the inside of the cap, you'll have a little B, little Christian Your B, and on top of the atomizer, Christian Your logo once more. And I'll go ahead and waste a couple sprays for you guys here. Like always, Christian Dior fragrances have sick atomizers, some of the very best. So here we go. Yeah, fantastic pressurized atomizer. Now, like pretty much all Christian Dior fragrances, this is gonna be pretty expensive. Even at discounters, you're not gonna find Dior Sauvage Eau de Parfum discounted all that heavily, if at all. So keep that in mind. Anytime you're shopping for a Christian Dior fragrance, you might not actually get much of a deal at discounters for these. Now, that's not to say you never will, because I have on occasion seen fantastic, amazing deals pop up at discounters for Dior Sauvage and other Dior fragrances. But when that happens and people notice, those fragrances sell out like that. My bottle I got luckily for, I think about 40 bucks, and those bottles were gone quick. So 99 times out of 100 when you check discounters, don't expect amazing prices. This one opens up with that Ambroxan that the Dior Sauvage line, especially the Eau de Toilette, is so well known for. Only in the Eau de Parfum, it's not as metallic, not as aggressive, not as in your face. So yes, it still has that Ambroxan when you first spray it on. It's just reined in and smoothed out a bit. In the opening, along with that Ambroxan, you get a nice, fresh, spicy, peppery kick along with a metallic tinged bergamot that gives you a bit of citrus there initially as well. And pretty much right away, you get this vanilla undertone that you can pick up. So it's this little vanillic sweetness that's riding underneath everything else. You also get this lavender that's sprinkled through the top and the mid, but it's not too much. Just a little touch of lavender, a nuance you could call it. Through the mid, you get nutmeg and Sichuan pepper that provides a contrast to the amber woody ambroxany feel of the fragrance and little remnants of that bergamot from the top carry over through the mid also. The dry down is puffs of warm spice, a light vanilla giving you bits of sweetness and a super appealing amber woody ambroxan backbone. Overall, in comparison to the Eau de Toilette, this one is less aggressive, less intense, it's a bit smoother, a little bit darker, richer as well. There's less citrus, less pepper, it's warmer, a little bit sweeter, and overall more restrained. Maybe you could say ever so slightly more mature. And even with all those differences between the Eau de Parfum and the Eau de Toilette, this is still unmistakably Dior Sauvage. It's really similar, even though there are all those differences. Basically, when you smell Sauvage Eau de Parfum, you're never gonna mistake it for something else. When you smell it, you know it's Dior Sauvage. And people seem to be pretty divided over whether the Eau de Toilette 
or the Eau de Parfum is the way to go. With Bleu de Chanel, the Eau de Parfum outsells the Eau de Toilette. With Dior Sauvage, it would appear that it's reversed. Pretty much anywhere that you look, when you search by best sellers, the Eau de Toilette of Dior Sauvage is always outperforming the Eau de Parfum. Not like Dior Sauvage Eau de Parfum is a bad seller though. It's always toward the top of best selling fragrances also. People love the stuff. Longevity for me, about 10 hours. I mean, the stuff lasts forever. The projection is above average as well. Though, I will say that the Eau de Toilette version of Dior Sauvage outperforms the Eau de Parfum, especially when we're talking about projection. The Eau de Toilette version of Sauvage for me just, <laughs> it, it, it ruthlessly and relentlessly chokes people out if I wear too much of this stuff. And I have figured that out the hard way. In all seriousness though, as long as you don't go apocalyptically overboard with spraying Dior Sauvage, you're gonna get positive attention. That's one of the reasons it sells so well is because people love this stuff. It's like Aqua de Joe back in the day when it was first released, everyone was buying Aqua de Joe because of all the positive attention that they received wearing it. That's why Dior Sauvage sells like it does. In terms of seasons, any. Yeah, legitimately any any season you can wear it. Uh, day or night, either, both. What situations would you wear Sauvage Eau de Parfum in? Literally any situation that's ever existed. Yeah, pretty much. Or at least as close as you're gonna get to that kind of versatility, you know, any season, any place, anywhere. That's what Sauvage Eau de Parfum is bringing to the table. Sauvage Eau de Parfum is a fantastic scent overall when you're talking about the performance, the versatility, and the compliment factor, the wearability of the fragrance. It blows all of those out of the water. Whether you should get the Eau de Toilette or the Eau de Parfum version of Dior Sauvage is up to what you want in a Dior Sauvage fragrance at the end of the day. Realistically, if you like the DNA a lot, you could get both of them, you know? But if you're wanting one that's more aggressive, that is more in your face, that is a little more youthful, you would go with the Eau de Toilette. If you want one that's a little more refined, a little bit sweeter, a little bit smoother, go with the Eau de Parfum. I like them both about equally, but I've worn the Eau de Toilette a little bit more than the Eau de Parfum for whatever that's worth. Dior Sauvage will always catch shade from people that are not big fans of the current Ambroxan slash Amberwood men's fragrance style that we find ourselves in the middle of right now. But if you're looking for a fragrance that you can buy and wear anywhere that pretty much everyone is going to enjoy, as long as you don't spray it too many times, you can't do much better than Dior Sauvage. It's right there with Blue de Chanel. And I guarantee you, I guarantee you, 10, 15 years from now, whatever fragrances are coming out then, you're gonna have people that hold up a bottle of Sauvage, Eau de Toilette, or Eau de Parfum, and they're gonna say, you know what? They don't make fragrances like they used to. You see that nowadays. You know, people will go, oh man, 15 years ago? Yeah, 20 years ago, fragrances that were coming out then, so much better than this trash that we have now. It's garbage now. The exact same thing will be said in the future about Sauvage, guarantee you. I'm gonna keep this really short <laughs> in terms of this little rant, but there are fragrances discontinued now that command hundreds and hundreds of dollars on eBay that people go crazy for trying to buy. And when they get them in, they go, oh man, what a masterpiece. The fragrances that this house makes now are trash, but this, amazing. And those same fragrances, you can still find forum posts that were archived from when those fragrances were, were being produced and being sold. You can find them anywhere where you have people saying, oh, this is garbage. This is complete trash. The fragrances being made nowadays are, are just the worst. They're terrible. And I'm talking about some fragrances that I love, discontinued fragrances that are great. But when those were readily available, people crapped on them. It's like, uh, it's like clockwork. <laughs> it's just, it repeats, history repeats over and over. Really quickly, let me hit you guys with some alternatives to Dior Sauvage. So you could check these out if you don't wanna pay as much and get something a little bit similar. First up, Prada Lunarosa Carbon. This one is really well known. It essentially is Prada taking the Dior Sauvage DNA, more specifically the Eau de Toilette DNA, and giving it a Lunarosa Prada twist. So basically a smoother, 
easier to wear Dior Sauvage is how some people would uh, would say that, but it's not going to be as in your face, not going to be as aggressive. The performance is not going to be quite as good. Still though, Prada is a premium designer brand, so you're not really you know buying a fragrance that looks like a cheap kind of knockoff if that's important to you. And Luna Rosa Carbon, always more affordable than Dior Sauvage at discounters. Then there are a couple of our Moff fragrances. There's this one, Ventana, and this one, the pride of our Moff. Ventana is gonna be closer to a Dior Sauvage Eau de Toilette clone. So this is gonna get you much closer to the EDT, not necessarily the EDP. Though, like I said, the Eau de Parfum still is pretty close to the Eau de Toilette. So if you wanted a cheap alternative, you'd check this one out. Pride of our Moff is going to be closer to the Eau de Parfum version of Dior Sauvage. So that means this one is smoother, a little sweeter, and definitely not as in your face. And then last but not least, Coach Platinum. Now this doesn't smell exactly like any of the Dior Sauvage fragrances, but you could say it's Sauvage-esque. Maybe? It's a fruity Ambroxany modern mint fragrance, great for compliments and very inexpensive. Again, we're talking discounters when I say inexpensive. So Coach Platinum, another great choice if you're looking for a fragrance that you would wear in similar situations to Dior Sauvage, but you don't want to spend Sauvage money. So there we go, guys. My review of Sauvage Eau de Parfum. As always, thanks for hanging out with me today. Thanks for all your support. Stay safe out there. See you tomorrow with another fragrance video. See you guys.